and gentlemen, this is the race to play Formula One Pro Series Canadian Grand Prix. This is going to be the race broadcast section. The first part is the, uh, oh, who is that going looping around? Oh, wait, that's right, you're looking at the track map. Silly me! So anyways, um, what was I doing? Oh yes, this is the race broadcast, so hopefully these guys won't take so doggone long. Never break in, stopped in the middle of the track. What are you doing? Doing a mock start. Okay, all of the penalties have been assigned, so guess who actually is awarded the pole? Tim Brook was fourth quickest in the qualifying sessions, but it appears Tristan, Hines, and Darren all have penalties, so uh Time. It's going to be Tim on the pole. So we await the end of the warm up session and we will go straight to the race. That's a very cool looking shot, ain't it? So right now, here's how the grid looks to be at the moment. Oh, hello. Oh, formation line, I guess. Alright, so here's how the grid is going to look for the time being. Tim Brook starts on pole. McLaren Mercedes. Chris Hack, second place. Ryan Walker, third. Kevin Britton is currently in fourth. Adam Assault is in 5th, Tristan Bayless 5 spot grid penalty in 6th, Darren Adams also 7th, 7th also 5 spots, Jose Casanova 8th, Brother Sergio starts I think a row back at 9th, Mark Dowling is in 10th, he's going to know. Heinz Petzold a full 10 grid spot penalty, going on right here. Show you in a minute. Paulo Martins is 12th in the Ferrari. Anthony James Lotus. Bobby Lipter in a generic car. Mark Johnson, 15th. In the motor, 16th. And here's where the interesting bit lies. Paulo Neto has somehow gotten himself disqualified before even going. I know he's arguing with the race That is going to be a very, very unpleasant sighting. George Pole actually is finally decided to wake up and go around. Brian Farley is in 19th. Kevin Ransom, 20th. Looks like 19 cars are going to make this start. Two drivers outside of the top 107. And so they were not racing, unfortunately. Cars cycling around. Down Casino Straight. One good look at the rest of the field before they line up in the grid. Oh, brick chicken in the back.
may or may not work, but we'll see. Here we go. Ah, but it didn't work. Oh well. Here come the lights. Oh, that's a long light. I actually ran out of room for that one. Oh well. Drive the penalty over here. Start the game once more. A lot of cars slow getting away. Into the first set of corners. All clear through two. Falling apart, where is this chaos happening? That's in the turn five, six, seven complex. Let's see who's falling apart. Whoever's lost a wing. Oh, Jose Casanovas is out. Lap one. Suspension damage. Meanwhile, back at the hairpin. Kind of soul gets inside somebody. Car slide left and right all over the place. Whoa! Linder, where are you going, man? Corners that way, man. Come on. Signs. And I can't cycle around my camera fast enough. Oh well. Looks like Tim Brooks is going to get away very clean. Opening lap, minute. Oh, wait, this is the race time. We're not worried about a few times. He's got a 1.6 second gap on the second place. Church Bayless, who is coming in a. Oh, Tristan's right there. Tries to go to the outside. Can't get it done. They were side by side right there. And Tristan was going to make the audacious move to the outside. Now he's going to try to draft. Goes to the outside again. And actually makes the pass done. Easy as pie on the casino straight. Brooke tries to take it back. Whoa, was there contact? Chris Hack is going around. Zach's gone around in this chicane. Look out! Contact! Oh, Chris, hi, ah, Chris, 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 Chris. Why, oh, why, oh, why did you do that? Look out, Daniel! Oh, dear. That was a very unsafe entry back onto the track, Chris. Oh, well, anyways, Chris Bayless, he's going to set sail for the bright lights of the big city of Montreal by way of Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. 
But in the meantime, let's take a look at Hines. He is mired back here in traffic along with his teammate Darren. Tries to get inside of Mark Johnson inside the hairpin, but can't quite get it done. That's not the button I want to push. Yep, it's inside of Mark Johnson. Can't quite get it done. Tristan Bayless resets fast time. But it's 17.449. He's just set sail. Montreal, I would say, is very much a hybrid course between regular road and street. It is basically, this place is basically a park 50 weeks out of the year. The only exceptions are the two weeks when motorsports is allowed to get onto the premises and race. In the case of this weekend, it is 4 to 1. In a couple of weeks, it will be NASCAR Nationwide Series. Heinz locks it up. Into the hairpin. Hopefully, he didn't damage his car in the case because that uh, getting mired back there is going to be very difficult to get out of. Look into the bag. Is there any action? George Pole! Working his way around Chris Hack for 16th place. They're going to go side by side. Oh, somebody else is off. Anyways, George Paul, 16th place, being worked on by Chris Hack. Heinz has actually managed to work his way around a couple of cars, and now he's going right around Mark Downing. Let's take a look back in the space time we were machine. Sergio, Yeah, whoa, lost it. He takes the ball champions and promptly GTFOs out of the corner. Back live. Bayless up five starts in the first couple of laps. That is a pretty amazing run off the line. Meanwhile, Hines and Darren have managed to clear several cars in the process and are now in the set their sights on Mark Johnson again, who's... These guys have managed to benefit from the mishaps of a couple of people. Ooh, somebody locks up in front of him. Might have been... goes off. Paulo Martins knocks his front wing off. Fortunately not, he's pretty close to the pit, so he might be able to do something about that. Here comes the field circulating through. Focusing on Hines. Whoa! And Hines wipes out because of the maneuver in front of him. That threw his concentration off just a little bit, and that has sent everybody scattering. Mark Dowling took a pretty brave move going with the hair, the chicane right there, and uh, Lost him. All right, let's take a look at things in order. Paulo Martins. This is from just a moment ago. We'll speed it up a little bit. 
checking how the hairpin worked out. Nope, just lost in under braking. And meanwhile, fast forward up ahead to Hines. Who is it in front that makes the dodgy move? Looks to be Mark Johnson, because, uh, oof, surplus. And that just causes Hines to flat wipe out. It's back live. That is actually... No, counter results actually managed to get clear of Johnson. In the meantime, who's now got Darren Adams bring up down his neck. That was a very crazy few moments right there. Counter Pasol goes to... Oh, 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 oh. How do they get through that? Mark Johnson kind of sold trading spaces at the moment. Not sure how they managed to survive. And now Counter Pasol oh, jams everybody up. Cards are very, very close quarters around here on this very tight semi permanent circuit. Whoa! Counter gets sideways off the exit of the corner. Almost loses it. Resets fast time. Good brief. Minute 16.972. He's going to own all of the fast laps. Mm, Darren's just stuck. So Hines is doing. Looks like Hines is currently in a battle with Mark Dowling. Eighth. Hines actually gets around on the outside, clears them easily. Meanwhile, Darren Adams wipes out in turn one. Losses, loses it under breaking. No harm, no foul, and he's only gonna lose a couple of positions from that. Gotta be very, very careful with the brakes around here. You gotta maintain them with absolute precision, otherwise that happens. In the meantime, Hines coming back again through the field, but losing time very quickly to the very, very quick Tristan Bayless. Who, so far, as far as we've heard, has not made very many mistakes, if any. It's Tim Brook in second, way the heck back. Here's Tristan Bayless. He's out in front. Oh, somebody lost a wing right there. Whose wing is that, I wonder? That is Daniel Montours taking a agriculture shortcut, trying to avoid damaging stuff. Let's see what happened here. We get right to the thick of the action. Oh, Sergio loses it. Oh, nails cross hack. And that causes Daniel. Trying to get around. This is it. Another couple car incident right there. Daniel's having to limp his way around. Mark Johnson in the meantime is going to be with the undermark. Mark Dowling going head to head for seventh position. Hines back at six. Looks to be ten laps hard complete in this 70 lap Grand Prix distance event. Time is flying by very, very quickly. And the surfers probably decided to stop scoring some people. Interesting. You have to wait for people to cycle around to the front. Looks like we will get a gap reset right here. Tim Brook in second. 11 seconds back. Kevin Brickton. And another five. And a one for our Walker. And a Basol. Give him another four. Hines another one. 
We got our second second back for Mark Nelling and Darren Adams each, respectively. Anthony James, last guy on the points. Give him half a minute and three to spare. 40 seconds back is Chris Hack. Brian Farley, 44. Adrift. Kevin Ransom, 49. George Paul, 53. Paula Martin's right behind him. And then Tommy Linder, way, 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 way back there. Almost a minute. Two cars, one lap down at the moment. Sergio Casanovas is the first car, one lap down. And the Montour, also one lap down. Both due to various bits and pieces falling off their cars at the moment. Looking at the moment, Jose Casanovas is the only car officially out of the race. And then we have the unfortunate Polonetto who got thrown out. That puts Matifi car 20th. What do you do? Matifi car is supposed to finish last, ladies and gentlemen. So a very, very unfortunate situation for Paulo Neto. Meanwhile, Counter Basol has got a, a wild apex predator in his mirrors. Heinz using every little ounce of track trying to get caught up and he actually falls behind. He misses the corner just a little bit. Right there, though. Break it down to the hairpin. I would take it the advantage right there to Hines, but Tristan Bayless, minute 16.925, resets fast time again. Hines right here, side by side. Down Casita straight. Is the gamble going to pay off for Hines? Yes, it does. Oop. Little crossover move by Cantor. How did Kenner do that? That was a spectacular crossover move by Kenner Basol to get him on the outside of the chicane. It's O'Hein, it's back to square six. Trying to go to square five again. Meanwhile, Darren Adams is pretty much trying to do the same thing to Mark Dowling. But this time, Darren Adams Jason and Williams were nowhere. Canner is in a Marvel and McLaren. The smoke up front, just lock up. Give the advantage to Darren in terms of car line, I would say. But in the meantime. Chicane, also pretty good. Actually, Darren's losing a little bit of time. I wonder if he might be having a slightly higher down for set than. Dowling has to slow down for quarters, and actually, Dowling goes wide. That opens the door for Darren to get right up on his gearbox. Where's he gonna make a move? He's gonna make a move right down early casino straight. Can't get enough of a run to make the move right there. He's gonna try again. Towards the game. Somebody's off. Darren Adams actually is able to make the pass stick. I want to say it was Sergio Casanova's that was slow there again. So Chris Hack, let's take, a, let's take a look in the space time we want and see if that was actually the case of Sergio. Being the one to go off. So basically, he's right in front of this cloud right here. Yep. Actually, there's a very nice little spin right there. To and they actually just retired. So, gives up the ghost. At lap 14 completed for the rest of the field, he's gonna end it at 13. So both the Casanova's brothers are out of this event at the moment, which is a disappointment for them, I'd imagine. In the meantime, Tristan Bayless is still way the heck out there up front, pretty much leading every lap since lap two. 
And everybody's pretty much managed to settle down for the most part. Actually, Kevin Britton and Ryan Walker are very close. Looking to be the second best battle on the track, but judging by the looks of things at the scoreboard, I'd say everybody's pretty much even. Got their own nice little running gap to space out. So, let's take a look at the lead lap cars. Christian Bayless, currently up front, as we previously mentioned. He is yet to make pit stop. Tim Brook is second, 16 seconds back. And really spark it down Casino straight. Kevin Brickton is currently fur. He's only 24 seconds back, Tristan, but still a ways to go in this event. Ryan Walker is in fourth. 25 seconds back and just a second back or less. Wow! Kevin Brickton gets every little bit of that green section by the Wall of Champions. Heinz but old. Fifth? Locks up a little bit on there in turn one, turn two, but eh, a little lockup never hurts. Too bad. It's the one where it just doesn't unlock that you do the slight issue with. In the meantime, down to the green order. Six, kind of a soul. West McLaren is 30 seconds back at the field. Mike Johnson, 31.264. Well, that's actually his time back, excuse me. 30, 30 seconds back is Darren Adams at currently at 8. Mark Daly, ninth so far. Last point on the grid. Currently belongs to Anthony James. Chris Hack is closing quickly, but it'll be a hard-fought one. And Brian Farley is back here in 12th. Polo Martin's 13th in the Ferrari. Devin Ransom, 14th in a Red Bull. George Pohl in a John Player Special Lotus is in 15th, having set no Q time as far as I can tell. Very interesting strategy, needless to say. Dommy Linder. Is a minute and change of drift, and then Daniel Montour is just gone, one lap down. Currently, three cars are actually out of the race. We have the Sergio Jose Casanova's brother pair. Sergio 18th, Jose 19th, and Paulo Neve technically 20th. There's a <clears throat> something in the way. Meanwhile, up front, absolute boredom. Back here? Wait a minute, where did... Okay, nothing changed, nothing changed. So, just something not goofy about the numbers that popped up and was like, huh? Ah. Ooh, Johnson, right there on Counter Soul's rear gearbox, nearly. Let's go on board with Johnson, see how he does around this track. I thought that was going to be a brief moment for me to take a break, but apparently Counter Pistol had to mess that up. Counter's actually stopping? What is this all about? Oh, Counter Pistol, out! I wonder if he's actually had to take evasive action or something. In the meantime, let's go a minute back. Because you notice, right as uh, we went on board Johnson, he uh, spun coming off the exit of the corner. Flash came. Let's take a look on board. Back to see the straight area. In 
hits the exit, the entry in middle pretty good, but the exit, just a nice little 360 move, no harm, no foul. I don't see why that would warrant a uh, disconnection unless something else has gone horribly wrong in real life. Man. I hope everything's okay. But in the meantime, I never saw done for the day. That puts Mark Johnson six. Darren Adams is right behind him in seventh. Looking to. Oh, Darren goes around. Made a little bit of contact with the left front on the right side wall, and that's going to give up the position real easy to uh, Mark Dowling. No contest there. This is a very, very, very challenging track, and if you don't keep up with the least bit, you are going to go for a ride. In the meantime, up front. Kevin Brickton's currently in third, but he's going to have Heinz Petzl right there with him, along with Ryan Walker. As they battle for the last spot on the podium. Oh, hello, Kevin Brickton, first guy to the pits. Up and down, I would say that's a sub three second stop. Change of tires, looking to be a two stop strategy for Kevin Brickton. It's only completed lap 20. So we now have the answer to the mystery question of the pit strategy. Two stops. Looks to be if you're doing softs, I think. Medians, I would want to say you're kind of pushing it on this uh, on this very challenging street circuit. A lot of flat corners, so you're not going to get any baking to help you around a lot of these very sweeping corners, truth be told. Well, sweeping in comparison to, say, something like, go oh, some dude by the name of Hermit Hill. Somebody's going off. Chris Hack. Really slow getting away from a corner. I'm probably the cause of a little yellow. I'll take a look at that in a moment. In the meantime, any other takers for the pits? Tim Brook in the pits. Oh, he's, it's a long stop. He's probably coming to fix damage. That was a very long stop for Tim Brook, but he's got at least a fresh set of tires. He's looking to roll away. Meanwhile, for Sack. This is the part where Now oh, we're a couple of corners back, I think. This has just happened a few moments ago. Sit around lazy Susan style. Makes a bit of a rolling roadblock, but hey, that happens when you just freshly spin. Right now, due to the pit stops, back live has been promoted to second in the running order behind Tristan Bayless, just 22 seconds ahead in the road. So now we have the setup. The setup is going to be Can Hines actually chase down Tristan Bayless. And if he has, if he has the time, can he actually do anything with them? Heinz is going to stay off for the time being. Tristan, way ahead. Whoa, Ryan Walker. Sideways. Mark Johnson's fourth. Simberg's fifth. Darren Adams sixth. Kevin Brigden, first of the cars to hit, is in seventh. A couple of other cars. Mark Dowling is an eighth. Is he gonna pit? No. Anthony James ninth. Chris Hack tenth. Brian Farley eleventh. Paulo Martins twelfth. Kevin Ransom thirteenth. Those are the thirteen cars that are on the lead lap. George Paul, Dominic Linder, and Daniel Montour are all at least one lap down. Well, actually, they all are one lap down. What am I talking about? At least. 
Here's Tristan Bayless. He's gonna make the corner. Here we go again. He's actually increasing his gap slightly. So now here's where the contrarian, ugh, excuse me, contrarian opinions are gonna have to figure out. The rules around here, here's how it works with the tires. When you take a run to Q2, you lock in your tire compound for the race. So some of these guys, if they're trying a one-stop strategy, they're most likely on the medium tires. I was hearing a little bit of discussion on track of some guys asking about two-stop strategies with the softs. It's just Bayless. Whoa! That was a Red Bull wing. Kevin Ransom has knocked his front wing off somehow. Hines ran over it. Hopefully it hasn't done any damage. So anyways, back to the conversation of tire strategy. It's probably going to be a one-stop for the mediums and two for the softs. The question is going to be, can you pick up enough time on the softs to warrant the difference in the amount of time you spend on pit road? That is going to be the key thing here. In time, Anthony James, Chris Hack, battle for ninth behind the trees. They're together. Oops. I want to go to that car. Not those cars. This car. See the folding change off to the side, so it's very tricky to see around some of these corners. Ooh, Chris is right there. Gonna get the run on. Ew. Oh, somebody's going off somewhere. Christian Hines, Ryan, Tim. Oh, nobody's willing to admit that. Oh well. Gaps are pretty much stabilized all throughout the back, except for the Chris Hack and Anthony James battle. And actually, Chris Hack is in the pits. Somebody else is in the front now. And it's the time to messed up stuff. Very long stop. Seven second stop, that is a very slow one. He'll rejoin in 12th. That promotes Brian Farley to the 10th and final points paying position. Grand total at one point available up for grabs in 10th. That is going to put everybody in their own zip code for the time being. Tristan Bayless is up front, leading. Heinz Petzl, 24 seconds back. Ryan Walker, 29. 31 seconds back to Tim Brook, and everybody else sort of scatters. Brian Farley and Paula Martins. Real close to each other. And actually, Paula Martins is getting close to Farley, so maybe a battle for the position. Chris Axe has actually gone one lap down. Christian's right there waiting to gobble him up. And actually, Anthony James just coming off pit row. That is going to put him one lap down as well. So, so with the pace that Bayless has managed to set, a lot of cars are going one lap down really quickly. Right now, the gap first and second is sort of stabilized for the most part. Uh, best battle on track right here, I would say, Darren Adams, Kevin Brigden. We're coming down Casino straight. Is any one of them going to, or either one of them, going to dive down pit road? That's an open a nope. A nope nope. Farley Knight. Whoa! Rev goes. Paula Martin. And he goes one lap down. Tristan had a good view of that one. Talk about narrowing track from one lane down to three quarters. 
little spin, no harm, no foul, just keep on rolling. Anthony James back here in 11th goes side by side with Chris Hack. That's not for any points, unfortunately. Who's that down the road I hear? Look around. No, I'm not seeing anybody in. Here's Hines. Also a nope. So we're looking to probably see those guys in around lap 40, 45, I would say. A couple of cars in the back of the field. I'll be Lynch for one, coming in fresh rubber. Christian getting around Brian Farley. Put him Brian one lap down. Just lining them up and knocking them down. Six cars, so one lap down, and two in the two lap down column. But those, the guys that are two laps down, have done that mostly because it's the same damage and requiring repairs. The top eight in the field are all separated by at least one second gap, so nothing really interesting going on at the That's just going to be the waiting game for the time being is waiting to see if and when these guys come down pit roads to make their first or one and only stop of the event. Cars circulating around. Very toward pace right now. Last lap for Tristan Bayless was a 116.288. That appears to be the fastest lap so far, so he's just taking time up everywhere. on the side. It's in the course as well. Finally, we get the update. Game, blah, blah. Oh, long yellow. What's this at? Just clear. Anybody's with position drastically? Hmm, probably just somebody taking a pit stop. Short shifted. Trish is actually shifting in the 15,000 RPM range. He's actually coasting here. How much speed has Tristan got in this thing? If he's not using his own entire RPM range, that is something. He 
was still 30 seconds clear of points. He's probably going all out here. Gershon is obviously taking care of his equipment. Compare that to Hines, who's right on the chip. Hines is getting to about 16,000 RPM for his ship, so he's using a full extra 1,000 RPM. And Tristan is still. The gap is increasing very quickly between them. Whoops. Somebody's off somewhere. Down on the motor is taking it to the garage. Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyways. Get a replay of this from a minute in time. Looks like Daniel is going to run off the track. Run off the track again. Agriculture racing. So that was his first goof. Had to give up the position there, and then. Then. Oh, this isn't a minute of time. A minute is an eternity in motorsports. So he goes straight off. Decides to go eat hot dogs in the grandstand. So, Alright, so that's the it for Daniel Montour. Sorry to see him go, but the wacky beat rolls on. Looks like Ryan Walker is in the pits, pulls into his grid stall. Down relatively quick. That's gonna give Kevin. Oh, wait, that's back in time. Excuse me. I forgot the reset time. Shit. Anyways, that's gonna. I think promote Mark Johnson to fifth. I'm wanting to say that's what I saw. But in the meantime, a little wiggly on the mark. 32 laps are complete so far. We are still waiting on the front runners to make their pit stop. That seems to be the winning strategy of these past few races is to avoid pit road as often as possible. Schumacher impersonation. Mark Johnson back in fifth. Still going at it pretty good. Ooh, real close to the edge right there. In the meantime, looking around, let's see if we can find a battle here. This thing on the track actually. Yeah, it's just everybody's spaced out on this very tricky circuit, and it's uh, really hard to make up any kind of time whatsoever. With, uh, with absolutely no runoff or anywhere hardly. You could say that the Canadian Grand Prix circuit is one of the last refugees of the old, uh, the old era. When I say old era, I mean pre hermit Tilk. With the stop and go circuits. Hines is in second. Gonna quickly boot up team speak and see if we can uh see if we can get back in here. Maybe see if we can find somebody to interview. Whoops. Got out of the way, sorry. 
priest can be back on. There we go. Person still short sifting and it sounds horrible. I'm sorry, but the short shift of these things sound is a crime. I'm sorry, it just doesn't sound right. It's just not good figure for it, I don't think. Woo, Tipper, little sideways on the curb. It's got a lot of camber built into that thing. Thirty-five is what we're completed so far. Looks like we're gonna get another time update here through the system. Nine's pets all way the heck back here on this short straight into the hairpin around to the casino. He's thirty-five seconds behind. Tim Brook, thirty-nine seconds. Mark Johnson. Way, 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 way back here. Ryan Walker and Darren Adams are actually pretty darn close here at the moment, so we might watch this for a while and see if anything develops. If they get up close to each other, this will be a battle for the fifth position. Just went out. Let's see what happened here. Space time rewind. Back one minute. Gonna wait for this a little while because it just happened. It's through the chicane okay. somewhere. Oh, just flat loses it. And decides patience is the better part of battle. Kevin Brayton just DNF. And this time we're actually having to back this up right away because this happened while we were replaying. Probably this happens right about... Oh, he gets off of the grass. Bam! So Kevin Brigden, done for the day. 
Got back live. Tristan Bayless still out in front. And looking pretty fancy. Mark Johnson fourth. Darren Adams is able to pull away a little bit from Ryan Walker. So those two have settled down for the time being. just past halfway in this event. And right now let's go quickly through the field. In the meantime, we have Tristan Bayless still out front, taking the lead on lap number two after taking a five grid penalty position on the start. He had the quickest lap time in qualifying, but due to some prior shenanigans in Monaco, it was something to, it was something to do with a boat and a lot of pretty girls. That's all I've heard. Tim Brooke, second position, 41 seconds back. Heinz Petzold third. Heinz must have just made a pit stop, I'm wanting to say, because he was second for the longest time. Let me look back in time real quick and see what happened. But uh, Mark Johnson fourth, 56 seconds back. Jared Adams fifth, just two seconds off of Mark Johnson, quickly catching up. Brian Walker was challenging Darren for fifth place, but he's Lost a little bit of ground, man. back at seven, or six still. Last guy on the lead lap is Mark Dowling at 13 behind. Tristan is going to quickly catch him up and gobble him up like a Pac-Man ghost. Chris Hack, first car, one lap down. Not in eighth. Anthony Jeans, ninth. Also one lap down. Brian Farley, tenth. Paulo Martins, eleventh. And Ferrari... Then we have the guys two laps down. Dommy Linder, 12th, and George Paul, 13th. Five cars, actually, excuse me, six, have uh, fallen out of the race due to DNFs. Five are DNFs. One is suspension damage. Jose Casanova's wrecked the turn one, lap one, pretty much. And that is the 19 cars that make the field. Still out front, actually. Wow! Is that Mark Johnson getting real wide? These guys are about to go at it, I think. Whoa, that was a bit of a lag spike. I'm going to say that probably looked pretty freaky. I apologize for that, but uh, it's the internet, and lag does sometimes happen. Let's actually take a look at the lagometer. I would say with these pings, it's probably something on my end, because Darren Adams is 430. Johnson not much better, so let's not look at the nice, unpleasant things like that. So Darren Adams, currently fifth, trying to take the fourth position away from Mark Johnson. We will see if they are able to do so. On Casino Street. Nose to tail, Darren pops out, and no, not there. Too far away. Whoa! Mark Johnson scrapes the wall of champions. You can say that uh, the Circuit Joe Villeneuve is Formula One's answer to NASCAR's Darlington. In terms of Darlington, you get the Darlington stripe. If you scrape the wall of champions, uh, well, you're just one of the unlucky souls that whack run off right there, along with a lot of other. Uh, well accomplished these racers. There it slides back a little bit. Just gonna have to regain a little bit of ground right there. Breaking down to the first couple of chicanes. Ooh, Darren got a little bit of grass on that one. I wouldn't say ooh. Johnson goes wide, can't. Get the power down. He's gonna 
drive right down Casino Street. Woo! Boy! Makes it stick? Yes? No? Maybe? I'll call that a yes. Alright, Walker. A little bit odd. Oh! We got a. Dive to the inside. Didn't quite work for Mark Johnson. Tried to pull the switch through and uh, didn't quite work out. So move Darren up to fourth. That's funny. 42 laps are complete. I'll actually make that 43. Chris Bayless just comes across the line. Has yet to make a pit stop. He's probably looking to stretch this out as long as he can so he can go wide open to the end. of Palo Martins in the low Ferrari. Look to use the draft to get away from Mark Johnson for a little bit. So the story goes. Go on board there and see how this see how he takes care of business around here. Just a minute of drift so far. I think Tristan Bayless is going to have a good chance of putting everybody a lap down. At the current pace he's going, but still got to make a pit stop sometime, unless he's unless he's one of those crazy fools that's decided to take hard tires and he's just going to milk them for all it's worth. Just six cars still left on the lead lap. Ryan Walker is the guy that's, that will go down. case of uh, this being lap. Mark Johnson just a little bit ahead of the road from Brian Walker. Uh, 57, or 59 seconds back, excuse me, I'm looking at Baron, who's 57. Back. Heinz Betzold, 50 adrift, and then Tim Brook. All by his lonesome in his own zip code, 41 seconds adrift of the Tristan Bayless, who is apparently off in his own time zone. Sometime, somewhere, these guys are going to have to come in eventually, I would think. Then again, Tristan Bayless has been shifting up a full thousand RPM sooner than he's supposed to be. Still going around. Very quickly. Actually, Tim Brooks just able to reel him in a little bit. He's down, down to 40 seconds. Perhaps tires are starting to fall off. Whoa! Mark Johnson goes all sideways. On the backside of the circuit. 
Ryan's going to give the position up to Ryan Walker. We'll have to take a look and see what happened there in a little bit. In the meantime, Chris Bale is still way out there. Let's take a look back in space time and see what happened to Mark Johnson right here. He's currently right here. This replay, he's ahead of Walker. Heinz Betzold, minute 16.213, sets fast left of the race. I think it's off this corner right over here. Oh. Maybe not. Still no replay. Maybe it's the next set of corners. Actually, I think Tristan Bayless actually has just hit it. There goes Johnson. Let's take a look at the replay. Yep, Tristan Bayless has just left his pit stall. And that is actually going to put Mark Daly back on the lead lap, but if only for a little bit. So that's the magic answer is 47 laps. That's what Tristan Bayless has been able to go on his first stint. That is going to leave a very, very, very short second stint for him. I'm wanting to say just 23 laps. 23, 24 laps is very impressive tire wear from the man from SoCal. That leaves Mark Dowling a minute 20 seconds behind. But of course they've been circulating for a minute 16, so that gap is quickly going to shrink a little bit. Somebody else went just when hits one of the lap down cars. I'm gonna say I can't find him. Ah, oh, Anthony James has lost a wing. See if we can find it. No, it happened a while ago because he's been running around with it. Gone. It's back live. It's going to be a slight disappointment change of events. Mark Dowling just comes off pit road live. Right behind Anthony James. He's going to lose that lap again. In the meantime, Tim Brooke. He's also recently made a pit stop. He is now back at third. That's promoted Hines back to second, but Hines didn't make a stop really, really, really early, so maybe maybe he's trying to do the opposite of what Tristan did. Pit early and then just stay out there for as long as you can. Or he could be just flat on his use top strategy and nobody could touch Tristan with uh, that extra fresh set of rubber. Let's take a listen to Tristan see if he's still short shifting. Somebody's going off. Come right back on. Tristan Bayless is only short shifting to 12,000 on those runs, and he's really, really coasting. Probably knows that everybody behind him has to make at least one more pit stop to make it to the end on tires. We'll have to wait and see what is going on here. Whoa! Tim Brook gets the hairpin all wrong. Fortunately enough, there is actually runoff area space over there, so you can uh, sort of catch a car and not break your neck doing it. Meanwhile, Darren Adams is in fourth. He's got Tim Brook in his sights and will probably try to chase him down, noticing the excessive amount of tire smoke that just suddenly appeared in front of him. Ryan Walker, fifth place. Having a very good top five run going so far. And then Mark Johnson's back in six. With, uh... Wait a minute, why is Mark Daly solo sitting back on the lead lap? Tristan Bayless is really, 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 really off the pace. Did Tristan... Did Tristan not fill the car up enough? He's way off the pace. Tristan is doing a minute 18 last lap. I get the feeling Tristan just managed to screw this race up from the get-go. He is way off the pace here. That's a concern because Hines is back there in 20th. Or, 
you know, just 20 seconds back, and he's able to go full throttle. Did Tristan not fill the car up all the way? That'd be crazy. It'd be a critical, it'd be a critical metagame error if that indeed happens to be the case of Tristan simply not filling the car up. In the meantime, Brian Walker side by side with Darren Adams. Into the chicane. And through. Very quickly. But yeah, that car is just not healthy. Now he's shifting to 12,000. And it just pretty much goes straight to seventh gear. I mean, he basically, Trishan is using the gearbox. Oh, Trishan! That reduced pace has messed him up. He got the acceleration all wrong, and a couple of cars behind him got the corner wrong. That is the first physical mistake that we've seen out of Tristan all day. Maybe that metal lapse is cause he really is low on fuel, and he's gonna run out. Should be a huge disappointment for being able to run out, you know, starting from the sixth starting position, jumping out to the lead on lap two, and then start running away from everybody, getting up to, I think, at most a 40 to 45 second gap, and then all of a sudden realizing, oh crap, I didn't fill the car up enough. That's gonna be a huge disappointment, because the gap right now is down. 11 seconds. Heinz Petzold knows Tristan Bayless is somehow wounded. Ladies and gentlemen, in the last 20 laps, we got ourselves a fight coming up. Take a listen to Heinz Petzold's car. Shifting in the 17,000 RPM range. Bear that audio sound to Tristan Bayless. Just pretty much goes straight through the gearbox to seventh. And he's down. 4,000 RPM on Heinz Petzold. And it's a very ill car that's currently in the lead. The gap is down to 10 seconds. And now the question becomes, the, it's a two-part question now that's upcoming. How badly did Tristan Bayless miss the fuel calculation? And because of him having to slow down so much to try to save fuel, is he going to try to put a fight up to the to Heinz Petzl? The only logical answer to that question, I would think, would be Heinz is just simply going to be able to steamroll Tristan right here. Tristan cannot afford to put much up a, up much of a fight and. Uh, you know, risk guaranteeing that he's going to run out of fuel. It's just not going to realistically happen. Tim Brook, meantime, has set the fast lap of the race. The gap is down to 8.3 seconds between Tristan Bayless and Heinz Petzold. seconds. Meanwhile, Tim Brook just recently set the fast lap of the race and looking to try to get in the battle for the overall victory. He's only four seconds back of the presumed eventual leader, Heinz Petzl.
meantime, Chris Hack looking to get a lap back. This is the one car in between Tristan and Hines. Gap is down 7.5 seconds. Tristan's getting a little more aggressive with his upshifts. He's now shifting around 13,500, 14,000. Maybe, 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 maybe he's getting within his window. But if he was backing off that much, I would have to think that he really missed the call by several laps and he's gonna have to lean it way back in order to make it. Because the gap actually has stabilized for the most part to the 7.5 seconds. But in the meantime, Hines not only has to contend with trying to hunt down Tristan Bayless, but he may or may not be aware that Tim Brooke is coming up quickly behind him. The gap between those two is right now about a 3.5 second gap, and I think Tim Brooke has been closing it. Gap is down to 6.825 between Tristan and Hines. Tim Brooke actually fell back a little bit. Oh, about a four. Fourth position, Darren Adams just got inside of uh, Brian Walker and is taking the fourth position away from him. So they're giving the fans their money's worth. Fast lap to Heinz Betzel, minute 16 flat. Gap is, the gap seems to stabilize between the first and second sectors, but it's the long, 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 long casino straight that Hines has been able to pick up the majority of the time, simply because the straight is so long and, you know, unit, um, you know, Hines right now is going 185, topping out right at 187 miles an hour, and Tristan's basically down there in the 170 range while he's coasting about. Take a look at the gap right here. Took another half a second out of it, so Hans Tristan might be okay here. He's still leaning it way back at the moment. Now the gap is 6.2 seconds between first and second. Seems well. Tristan's actually picked it up to 15,000 RPM at the top end. Let's take a look around this next turn down Casino Straight and see how he tops out in top speed. Tristan's been keeping keeps it flat at 175 miles an hour down the. See a straight. Meantime, Heinz Betzel, 10 miles an hour faster, 187. That's pretty much been the secret to the gap lost. Look at it right here. 5.6 seconds, the new gap. Tim Brooke is now also just 10 seconds adrift, but at the end of the day, he may not be a factor. 57 laps are complete of the 70 scheduled in the Grand Prix of Canada for Race to Play Pro. You want to get in on the action? Just sign up for a free account at racetoplay.com and get started today. Just 12 laps to go. Christian has actually found himself a drafting buddy. 
he can actually lean it back a little bit and use the fuel savings just a bit. Ooh, right up there by the wall. Who is that in front of him? That's going to be Anthony James. In the 11th position. Five seconds flat is the new gap. Gaps all of a sudden half down to half a second. What happened? What happened here? Let's look back space time real quick if we can. We'll fast forward through this so we can figure out what just happened to Christian. Oh, we just flat loose. Just flat lost it off of turn three and four. And uh, that has brought Hines right up there. I don't know if Tristan did any damage. Somebody else just freshly spun. In the meantime, the gap all of a sudden has changed to just seven tenths of a second with another physical mistake by Tristan Bayless. It's going to be very, very tight right here. And now. Christian's got to contend with Hines right up there on his gearbox. And Anthony James is still lap traffic in the way. He has to get around real quick. Does so. How much fuel did that cost him to the end? Hines is able to also get around with a little effort. To the hairpin. Car spins up in front. That's Chris Hack. That gives both the leaders a good scare, but the gap is now increased to 1.1 seconds. Tristan is actually on it. 185 miles an hour down the back stretch of the Casino Straight. And it's on. Gap comes back down to a six tenths of a second. Up from about a 1.1 in sector two. And there is no saving fuel for Tristan anymore. He has got to get on it and on it fast. He's got just 10 laps to hang on against a very hard charging Heinz Petzl who is probably clear on fuel and ready to rock to the end. Question is, is Tristan able to able to hang on? Obviously Bayless has got the fresher tires in this situation, I would think. Seeing as how Heinz has been pushing it hard for the past. I don't know, 20 or so laps since his last stop, and Tristan's been mostly coasting with a huge 40 second gap at one point to work with, but then a couple of mental mistakes and realizing you may not have enough fuel to the end, and uh, here we are. Gap seems to have stabilized, and actually Tristan's starting to pull out again to a 1.12 second advantage. This is gonna be very tight because it's a very, very fine balancing edge between trying to push the car to get the gap that you need to save fuel, but at the same time, if you don't save fuel, you're probably going to run out at the end. So what do you do if you're Tristan Bayless? Right now, we're seeing his selection at the moment is to try to race out to a slight and pull the gap away. But he knows that another mistake, and he's going to lose the lead right here. He's led pretty much from the get-go. 
taking it on the second lap from the pole sitter, Tim Brooke. The difference in line, Tristan takes a slightly wider line out on the exit and only loses one tenth of a second. The gap is currently 1.2 seconds between first and second. Tristan Bayless just reset fast lap though, minute 15.894. I think Tristan Bayless is all in, win, lose, or duck. He's got a couple thousand RPM to work with. Just Eight laps to go. 62 currently in the books. We're working lap 63. Actually, all of a sudden, Heinz Fetzel is a speck in the dust. Except when he gets the hairpin, the roads converge pretty closely. Into the casino chicane, wall of champions on the right. Hines is giving it everything he's got, but Tristan Bayless may have just finally figured out he has actually got enough to the end. Gap is stabilized 1.6 seconds. This is the best battle on the tracks by far. They are the closest on the track for a position, and this is also for the race win. Tristan Bayless has missed two rounds so far of the five that have been currently run. One was to computer malfunctions in the opening round at the Australian Grand Prix. And another was to a vacation at the Nürburgring, and who would not want to uh, cross the Nürburgring off of their uh, bucket list? Actually, the Nordschleife. Nordschleife is actually a better place to be than the new, as they say. Meantime, Heinz has been here from the get-go. He's been in all of the events and has been fairly dominant, along with his teammate Darren Adams. They've been able to pretty much all but clinch the team championship for themselves. And looks poised to uh, set themselves up for a 1 2 finish in the driver's standings. But in the meantime, here and now, it's all about how much fuel Tristan Bayless really has left. Does he have enough to make it to the end, or did he not fill it up enough and cost himself a victory from before the green flag even... Well, the lights went out, actually. There's no green flag to start these things. But anyways, the point is, does Tristan have enough fuel to make it to the end or not? Judging by the fierce fight he's put up, he might have enough, but at the same time, he was really, really off the piece there for the longest period of time, and he may... Only he knows how much fuel he's got at the moment, and right now he's not telling. Meanwhile, as these guys circulate around, the top seven cars are on the lead lap. Obviously, Tristan Bayless and Heinz Betzel are out front first and second. Then you've got Tim Brooke is in third, five seconds back. Not been able to close the gap on the Heinz at all. In fact, he's losing a little bit of ground here. Darren Adams, 22 seconds back. Ryan Walker, 28 seconds back in fifth. Mark Johnson in sixth position. 55 seconds back. Well, 56. A drift. Mark Dowling, only a minute behind. And then we get to the cars. One lap down. Chris Hack, Paulo Martins, and Brian Farley. Brian's got the last point paying position in the field. He is in the last car, one lap down. 
Then two laps back, we have Anthony James and Domi Linder. As Paulo Martins gives them a little good scare. And then one car, three laps down, George Pohl. Six cars are out of the race. Five, two. Uh, spins and various incidences. Kevin Brigden, Kevin Ransom, Daniel Montour, Kevin Brissol, Sergio Casanovas, and then his brother Jose crashed out and turned one lap one. Wait a minute. As I was running through the field, Team Tynes has managed to get out in front. Let's see. Let's take a look back and see here. This is in replay. I'm wanting to say that due to the gap, Hines has been able to pull out all of a sudden. There is a mistake upcoming by Tristan Bayless. Yes it is, rear Blake spin. And so the fuel is not gonna matter at the moment. So because of a, a nutter mental mistake has now cost Tristan Bayless a shot at the victory. That is the third one this race. Well, fourth, if you count the possibility that uh, Tristan's not filled the car up all the way. So sorry about missing that little uh, incident right there. In the meantime, Christian has now cranked it up all the way. The gap is a half a second. There's a car elf up front. Does he realize the leaders are right there? Yes, he does. Stays off to the side. Just three laps of racing left to go in this event. You can tell Christian has now turned the wick up. There is no turning back now. Fastest lap, 115.086. They are getting very close to their qualifying times. George Bowles just gone out due to an accident. Probably that was him just off to the side. Ooh, Hines protects his line. Tristan is right there. Just a tenth of a second back. get this pass for sure if there's a pass up coming. Tristan all the way to the inside. Gets it there, has to clear, and Heinz gives up the spot. So Tristan Bayless retakes the lead. After giving Heinz a whiff of it, Heinz inside, woo! Very, 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 very close. Lap car up in front. Christian's going full width. He's going to have a lap car in front of him to contend with. Will that car get out of the way? Oh, another mistake by time, uh, Tristan. Notice he locked up a little bit right there. That puts him right, that puts Hines right back there. And now, Hines Petzl was able to make the pass stick. And it's out. It's gone silent in the cockpit of Tristan Bayless. He has run out of fuel with two laps of racing left to go. He is going to eat a DNF right here. There goes Tim Brook. And Tristan Bayless is going to have a huge, huge disappointment about this event. He's going to have to pull off to the side of the road. And probably he's going to have no choice but to park it. In the meantime, last lap, Heinz Petzl had a 10 spot grid penalty in this event. He worked his way up through the field through the chaos that is naturally the Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, Quebec, Canada.
He had another atypical Apex Predator run of minimal error, perfect pit strategy, and very, very consistent lap times. He gives a little wiggle of the tires to uh, Tristan Bayless, who knows he's not going to be able to make it all the way around. Final corner. Heinz Petzold for the Apex Predator team has managed to conquer the Grand Prix of Canada. Total race time, 1 hour, 30 minutes, 46.514 seconds. Tim Brook, the pole sitter, has managed to come home in second place. Heinz Petzold's teammate, Darren Adams, is going to come home third. 20 seconds back, Ryan Walker. Finishes it up. There's Tristan Bayless. They're at the side of the road at the start of the Casino Straight. He's going to lose a lot of positions. Whoa, somebody's off right here at the hairpin. So Tristan Bayless goes from a potential winning run all the way back to 10th. One point for such a hard-fought drive. You can only imagine uh, the feeling that Tristan must have at the moment for messing it up pretty much on the start. I mean, you could realize something was wrong when Tristan was sort of short-shifting for the most part, and you thought initially that it was just Tristan was holding back to uh, ensure that he doesn't uh, Run out. Oop. Heinz. Let's figure out how to do donuts. Actually, why is my camera screwing up? There we go. And it looks like they're going to try to get Tristan Bayless back. Oh, now that's just rude. I'm sorry, Heinz, but do you have to do celebrations in front of Tristan? That was a little uncalled for, I, I gotta say that. So what can I say about, uh, about the Grand Prix of Canada? I mean, for the most part, it was a typical, uh, typical race around the circuit. It was uh, a street fight, essentially. You know, when you put that many cars in such a tight space, eventually something is going to... Uh, Go wrong. A lot of cars. Okay, we'll leave. We'll leave. Anyways, um, so what can I say? In the meantime, uh, you know, a lot of mistakes can happen on such a flat, slippery slope. It is basically the the track is only used twice a year in real life, and the grip levels in the game are representative of that and for the most part it caught a lot of people off guard eventually even a very accomplished sim racer in terms of Tristan Bayless who as we noticed when he didn't feel the car up it probably nagged him in the back of the mind saying okay you know what you know how can I adapt and overcome this situation and it's just the change in RPM has probably caught him out on all three of those occasions that we saw him go sideways and it eventually caught up to him in the long run. If he had been able to say maybe, you know, keep the mistakes down to two or even one, you know, we could be looking at a slightly different result. He could be running out, you know, at the end of Casino Straight, turn twelve right there, and you know, possibly have a chance of coasting it in the rest of the way. But instead, he runs out right before the hairpin, and thus has no choice but to pull off the side of the road, and then that'll open the door up for Heinz Petzold to take the ultimate victory in this event. So, with that, it's a dominating performance by the uh, Apex Predator team of uh, Heinz Petzold and Darren Adams, first and third at the very end. Tim Brooke coming home in second. 
position. So with that, uh, I'm going to say we're done here. So for uh, racetoplay.com and the stewards for this event, I believe Tim MacArthur was in the boot, was in, up there for this one. My name is Lynn Kinchlow. Thank you for joining me on the uh, RGC1 TV streaming network. We'll see you next time.